Well, welcome back to another fishing adventure. I haven't been to this spot in a little over a month, I think. And it was all just all overgrown, just grown back. It was like it was like nobody was ever here, and I love it. That's the primary reason why when I fish when I fish at a spot that has uh, tall weeds and stuff, I don't cut it. I just uh, just mash it down because you know a week or two after I'm gone, it's back uh, it's back to where it was uh, before I got here, and it's like nobody's been here. If you cut it, then what you've done is created a spot and other people will come here and next thing you know this this spot is going to be all full of garbage and uh just just ruined so that's why i like to mash the weeds down instead of cut them whenever possible it's a little after seven uh, we're in the middle of july now getting hot today i'm out here fishing before it gets hot these are almond flavored tiger nuts that i prepared uh, I don't know, just a week or two ago, I guess. Uh, I made some new, a few new batches of tiger nuts. That uh, should last me the rest of the summer. Yeah, and these are starting to get slimy already. Something about the almond flavoring that makes them get slimy. The, my other flavors don't do that. This pack bait I made last night, I like to do that. Make it ahead of time for early morning sessions. It's my usual, if you've been around you know it. It's uh, oats, sweet feed can of cream corn and vanilla a lot of people ask about the bait in the comments I got a playlist over 50 videos all about carp bait go watch it I'm not gonna hold your hand in the comments and tell you everything step by step go watch the bait videos you learn something the link to that uh, bait playlist is in the description along with uh, links to every single piece of equipment that I use and also links to exactly how I tie up my rigs. It's all right there for you. All you got to do is open up the description and uh, read through it. Another little bit of information you'll find in the description is the filming date. Uh, this is not a, a daily vlog channel. This is, this is my a documentary of my fishing adventures but it's not, uh, not, not, not a daily vlog so uh, most of the time uh, my fishing videos are at least a week or two or more uh, behind real time so if you want to add some context to the video and see uh, what time of year it was filmed look in the description the filming date is always there but enough talk fish have been jumping the whole time I've been getting these baits ready time to catch a few yeah nice and shallow over there three four feet of water A little deeper there, four or five feet maybe. And about the same there, four or five feet. This is a little bay off of a, a bigger lake. Uh, the main part of the lake gets pretty deep, probably around 15 to 17 feet, I think. And uh, so I'm in this shallower area uh, seems to be like where they like to hang out that this place gets a thermal decline in the middle of the summer like it is right now So out in that deeper stuff you know, I wouldn't fish anything in you know in the middle of the summer heat I wouldn't fish anything deeper than 10 feet because there's gonna be a thermal decline and that's basically a dead zone that nothing's gonna be hanging out on the bottom uh, The fish that do go down there just for just for a little bit because that ox that water is so low on oxygen They just can't hang out down there. So yeah fishing shallow water in the middle of the summer is where it's at at least in lakes like this where there is a thermal climb. Not all lakes get it. Uh, it's hard to tell. I can't tell. I can't tell you if your lake has a thermal climb or not. You're just going to have to investigate it for yourself. And if you're thinking, what in the heck is a thermal climb? Well, then you've got some homework to do, I guess. I, I'm not going to try and explain it because there's, there's videos that you could watch that are going to explain it uh, much more clearly than I would. And they have uh, probably some graphics to help explain it too. It's a good thing to know uh, for fishing though. Definitely after you're done watching this video, maybe read into that. We got our first contender. It's been about a half an hour. 
I was just getting into reading that book that I just started, but that's all right. I'll take a break to catch a fish. <laughs> Brought the net cam today. Got some nice clear water. Should get some good shots. I got a pretty good fight on my hands here, too. It's feeling pretty good. This lake isn't known for giants, at least not in my experience. There's a certain kind of fish that I really want to catch, but I'm not going to mention it here. We'll see if, see if it happens today. Keep the line down low to the water like the musky guys do. It seems to help. All right, come on in here, fella. Really shallow right here next to the bank. Only a foot deep or so right here where my net is. He saw me. In summertime carp got energy for days. Okay. All right, first fish of the morning. This is a little guy, five pound carp. Gave me a good fight. Looks nice in that sunshine, doesn't he? <laughs> Back in the water. Thanks for playing. See you later. If you've been paying attention to my videos as of late, you probably noticed that I've been pretty much fishing exclusively with tiger nuts in my hook bait. And uh, the primary reason is, is this. I just caught a fish and they're still there. I don't have to do anything to the hook bait. Don't have to reapply it. Still good. They're so durable. They just... Uh, that it, they stay on the on the hair so well. I just I just love it. I also don't have to worry about um, nuisance fish picking my hook bait off. They can they can mess with it all they want, and they're not. It's not going to come off that hair. It's always going to be there. And obviously, you could get the same result with a plastic bait with a fake bait of some kind. You absolutely could. But I like uh, I like using natural bait. I like using actual real food. For the hook bait just my personal preference and back in that same spot with this one Plunk. i suppose since i mentioned it i probably should show it this is what i'm reading this morning the art of nonconformity by chris gillibo I was just rebaiting my other two rods because I haven't had any bites on those. This is the same rod that the first fish came on. This fish is right next to the bank down there. He's in the super shallow stuff down there. As you can see, it's really shallow. 10 feet out, it's only a foot deep there. Been here about an hour. That's why I was uh, getting ready to rebate those other two lines. I like to do that about every hour. Not so much to replenish the bait, but more to just check the rig to make sure it's not tangled or something. I like the idea of sitting there for long periods of time with a tangled rig. That's not going to do any good catching the fish. saw me. Swam up here, took one look at me, and then uh, headed for the hills again. Seems like crouching down like this seems to help sometimes. Just makes your profile on the bank smaller and uh, I don't know, they can't, they can't see you as good when you're crouched down like this. Sometimes it doesn't matter though. Sometimes it makes it netting easier though. Ooh. Okay, that's a little bit bigger fish than the first one. Cover the eyes, that uh, seems to help. They don't freak out quite as much. Sometimes it does, there's nothing you can do, but overall, it seems like covering the eyes helps. 
Yeah, fish number two of the morning. A little bit bigger than the first fish. I'd say this one's uh, about a six, seven pounder, I suppose. Gave me a good fight. Yeah, that sunshine's nice on these shiny gold fish. Back in the water. See you next time. Yes, I just washed my hands quick before I picked up the rod because I didn't want to get pack bait all over my rod. Can't stand that. Same one, third fish. Guess I found a hot spot this morning. Hey, hey, hey now, hey now. Yeah, it hasn't been uh, more than a few minutes. I was still getting that other uh, rod baited up. That's a technique that I like to do when fighting a fish. I'll, you know, so now I'm pulling them in, but if I feel them start to pull back hard, oh, I'll let them have it. You know what I mean? Pull them in and get some line. Oh, now it's double time. All right. Now it's a double time. I need to stop this fish from running. Okay. And then back in the rod holder, that goes with the bait runner well, and he'll run and I'll just keep an eye on that spool make sure I'm not gonna get spooled starts getting too crazy I'll pick that rod back up again and uh, stop him in his tracks so he doesn't uh, head for his favorite uh, log or boulder that's under there I'm gonna do that right now there we go Put my finger on the spool a little bit and provide some resistance. Get him to stop, stop heading over to his favorite log. Still haven't caught a glimpse of this fish here. Come on now. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Well, so when I when I uh, pull on the fish, so now I'm gaining, 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 gaining. But if I feel that fish start to pull hard back, I'll let him have it. it. Just seems to help reduce the hook pulls. Whenever you feel that hard that fish pulling back hard just give it to him let him let him go come on in come on come on yes that's even bigger than the first two all right I'm gonna go ahead and pick up on this other one and this one has run way off to the left. This is my line that was off to the right, and now he's way off to the other side. Pick up on him. He's there, still there. I felt the line rubbing on something. Must have found a rock or something, but I think I'm, I'm clear now. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a double net job here. All right, so that fish is in the net, sitting out there bring this fish over it's not going to be a triple because my third line isn't in the water it's sitting over there I was in the middle of getting it rebaited hopefully this fish is a little uh, worn out since he went for such a long run come on in come on in join the party yes two fish in the net Two fish in the net, zero lines in the water right now. This is the second fish, the smaller of the two. It's got some uh, parasite-y looking things going on on his tail. And you can see him a little better on that side maybe. There's the second fish, long skinny, probably a male fish. Seems like the male fish have that long skinny body profile most of the time. He's uh, missing a couple scales on that side. I don't know, maybe he got hit, hit with a, a crankbait or something. Good possibility. 
Well, my feet are soaked already anyway, so I might as well cool them off in this water. Double release. <laughs> See you later, fellas. We've got a carp that's hooked that doesn't know what to do. Yep. Sometimes they'll do that, they'll, uh, they'll get hooked and they'll just kind of sit there trying to spit the hook. Now he's swimming in with me. This might actually be a catfish. Yeah, that'd be a real good one if I was keeping catfish today. Stop it. So long, Charlie. Zoom. go I was just starting to think uh, maybe the bite was done for the morning it's probably about 9 30 or so it's starting to get hot we've got a little breeze going so it's still pretty bearable for me this fish has crossed over my other line this fish was way, this bait was way off to the right over there. And now this fish is way off to my left. He went a long way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Alright, so here he is, about par for the course, what I've been catching. I just had bells jingle on my other rod, and now the line is slack. Let's go see what's going on there. Thanks for playing. See you later. You're kind of relaxed fish, aren't you? This line is slack. Heard a little jingle while I was unhooking that fish. Eh, it's just a bass messing with it. All right, well, that's going to be it for this morning. Just a, just a short morning session uh, before the heat of the day sets in. Five fish, pretty good morning. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.